Step 4. Quantum communication. First, we have to realize that information is physical, because it is carried by physical systems. Therefore, the laws of physics determine what we can do to the information and how we can process it, and in particular, in our context, how we can communicate it. If we are only considering information processing in the context of classical mechanics, classical electromagnetism, and classical optics, then this will give us uh, tools and ways of processing the information classically and also communicating it classically. However, if we expand our toolbox to include also quantum mechanics and quantum optics, then we are also expanding in the ways in which we can process information and how we can communicate it. But the question before we start is, why would we want to do it? Why do we want to use quantum mechanics to process and communicate information? Well, for one, quantum mechanics is the fundamental theory of nature, currently, as we understand it. It describes the micro world, where classical mechanics does not apply. It makes some counterintuitive predictions, which, however, despite their counterintuitiveness, have been tested very thoroughly over many decades, and so far the theory has be always been proven correct. And uh, furthermore, considering new laws of physics, and applying them to information processing and communication could potentially lead to new ways of processing and communicating this information. So these reasons in themselves are very fundamental, but there are also practical reasons, as we will see in the next slide. The current computing technology is hitting a classical to quantum boundary. Why is that? Maybe you have heard of the Moore's law, which is not really a law of nature, but it's more of an observation, but so far it has held over a number of decades. And it's a prediction uh, uh, made by Moore that the number of transistors on a chip doubles approximately every two years. So for example, in the 1970s, we were down here in terms of the number of uh, transistors uh, per chip, and it was in the thousands. Then 20 years later, with the introduction of uh, Intel Pentiums and so on, and similar processors, uh, the number of transistors had risen to a million, or approximately a million. And around now that we are over here, all the way up to 50 billion, the new Intel chips and the new AMD chips. But how, 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 are, the, how are the manufacturers doing that? They have to pack so many uh, more chips, orders of magnitudes more chips on, uh, sorry, transistors onto a single chip. Well, the chip itself is not getting any bigger. What's getting smaller are the transistors. So at the beginning, there were approximately 10 microns across. In the 1990s, they moved to about 600 nanometers, and now we are at the level of a single nanometer. So as we said, quantum mechanics is the theory of the micro world, where things are very small. So the current transistors are also getting uh, to a size where we should be really starting to get worried about how quantum mechanics will affect the behavior of these transistors and therefore the way in which we can process and communicate information. So, what are the things that quantum mechanics offers? Number one is the superposition principle. And this principle is not really anything new in the classical world because we can see the superposition of waves. And in fact, you use it in communication. But in the context of communication, what we mean is superposition of bits. We can have things that are both true and false at the same time. They are on and off. They are a yes or a no. And when we expand uh, the principle of superposition to multiple par uh, particles, we get entanglement. So entanglement has no classical counterpart whatsoever and it correlates distant uh, quantum objects across large uh, distances of space. And in particular, it's not any type of correlation, but it's correlation that is stronger than any classical correlation possible. And also, as we will see, it will allow us to communicate in completely new ways. And entanglement forms the main bedrock for quantum networks. So, is quantum communication difficult? As I said, quantum mechanics uh, has some uh, counterintuitive uh, predictions. 
Not only uh, that, but also it's very difficult to implement because quantum systems are very delicate, they're very fragile, and they very easily decohere, which means that they lose their quantum properties. They go from being true and false at the same time to being only true or to being only false. So basically, they just become classical bits. But at the same time, conceptually, designing new protocols for processing and communication uh, requires new tools. It requires completely new set framework of mind and how we approach problems and how we solve problems. So these challenges are more like opportunities. In the field of quantum processing and quantum communication, uh, we have a lot of engineers, physicists, mathematics, mathematicians, computer scientists working together to solve um, very, very difficult questions. So it's a very cross-disciplinary field.